Let's open our Bible in the book of John. Let's go to John 15. I want us to go and read a scripture that all of us we know, we've heard it before, we have thought about it, some of us we've prayed about it, but I want us to go to talk about it in another angle or another dimension, hallelujah. Are you in John 15? Can I read? Can I read? Verse one, it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruits, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruits, he prunes, and that it may bear more fruits. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Verse 4. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruits of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 5, I read, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Tell your neighbor and say, without God, you can do nothing. Tell your neighbor like you mean it. Say, without God, you can do nothing. Verse 6, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them in the fire and they are burned. Verse 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this the Father is glorified that you bear much fruit so you will be my disciple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we close our eyes and we thank the Lord for you. Father, we thank you for your word this day. Father, speak to our hearts. Change our hearts and our mindsets. Let us be followers of your will and be inclined to your will in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Ask your neighbor and say, whose disciple are you? Ask them again, whose disciple are you? Can we read John 8, verse 31? Can I read? Verse 31, it says, John 8, 31. Then Jesus says to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my words and are my disciples, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Ask your neighbor and say, whose disciple are you? Let your neighbor answer you, whose disciple are they? The Bible says in John 15, where we have read, that you are the branches, we who are sitting here today, are the branches. And Jesus is the vine. God the Father is the branch dresser. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he said, if you abide in me and I in you, you will then be able to bear much fruits. Hallelujah. You do know that as Christians or as children of God that we live in today, we live in a world that people are full of things that they can hold by their hands. You know that, right? That we live in a world that is materialistic. That unless you hold something by the hand, the next person can't believe what you're saying. So as a Christian or a child of God, the Bible said, we are the branches which are supposed to bear fruits that the world that we are living in, they'll be able to hear, to listen, and believe the message that we are giving them, which is salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Meaning as a child of God, not particularly a pastor or anybody who's called, but a child of God who one day accepted Christ in their life as the Lord of Sav and Savior. We ought to live as examples in the world we're living in today. That indeed this Christ that we speak of, we know him and we have seen him. And we can only attest and testify that we have seen him by the wonders or the miracles that have taken place in our lives. Or rather the fruits that we bear on daily basis in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we can only bear these fruits or yield out these fruits if we abide in the vine which is Christ. I want to talk to you today with the topic that says abide in Christ or stay in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In John 8, there it says, if you follow my commandments and you do my word and abide in me, then it means you are my true disciples. Meaning, if you can, you do not or cannot abide in Christ, you can never be a disciple of Christ. Hallelujah. Yes, you can be a born again Christian. We all lift up our hands at some point in life and we say we renounce our sins. I want to accept Christ as my Lord and Savior. But after accepting Christ, do we go and abide in him? Make him our refuge and our staying place. Or we go about on our daily business and carry on with life like nothing has happened. Now the question is, are you abiding in Christ? Are you abiding in Christ? I know you are thinking, yes, I read the Bible every day. I pray every day. My question is, are you abiding? Are you staying in Christ? Is your residence address Christ? Or your residence address is somewhere else? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, you can be a Christian. There's nothing wrong with being a Christian. Yes, you can pray, you can fast, you can preach, you can prophesy, you can do everything. But the question is, are you doing all these things? Now, there are things that happen to you on your left and on your right. Problems, situations, sickness, name it. The question becomes, are you still focusing on Christ? Or you are now focusing on your current situation? And it means if now your focus is your situation, it means your residence is no longer Christ. It's your situation. Are you hearing me, somebody? Are you hearing me, somebody? If you're hearing me, say hallelujah. hallelujah. The Bible says, if you abide in me and I in you, then you are indeed my disciples. Meaning, if you are under me, my residence, you will do everything about your life the way I order it to be. Don't get confused. Yes, the Bible says when you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. Am I right? But those desires, they come if I'm still under the residence of Christ. Not if I am under the residence of my heart desires. Understand me. It's very easy to shift from Christ and you are found under the residence of self-proclamation. Let me give you an example. We have a lot of preachers or pastors or prophets, whatever you call them these days, right? I have seen people who come in and out of this place in numerous places. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but hear me well, right? The Bible says he calls you. Are you hearing me? 
Are you hearing me? Are you with me? He calls you by his will. And he sends you by the same will. Now the question becomes, when he has called you, is the sending by the same will? Is the doing by the same will? Okay, let's get out of preachers because you say, I'm talking about preachers. Let's come to you and me. Normal Christians, right? You are saved. The Bible says he finds you. You don't find Christ. Christ finds you in sin. And he picks you up wherever you are. And he brings you into his kingdom. He cleanses you up and sets your feet on higher grounds. Am I right? And he says, come. You have opened your heart. I'm here to stay with you. Stay with me. The question is, after he has come to stay with you, do you still stay with him? Do you still stay with him? Like when you have a visitor in your house, you, the visitor comes in, you cook, you do everything, while they are still dining on the table and eating, do you still stay with your visitor and say, I'm going to stay with my visitor? Or do you leave your visitor on the table and you go and be busy about your business? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After God has come into our lives, we receive him. We open our hearts with gladness, with joy. I'm happy I'm a child of God. After we do that, do we still stay with him? Or we move away from him? You can still read the Bible. You can still fast. You can still pray in tongues. Sorry. You can still do everything that the Bible says. Now the question is, are you still doing it with him or are you doing it out of your own knowledge? There is a difference between doing what I know I'm supposed to do. This is, I know a Christian is supposed to do this. And doing something under the influence of the Holy Spirit, two different things. Which one are you doing? Are you doing things because this is what is expected of a Christian to do? I fast because the Bible expects me or God expects me to fast. Am I giving because God expects me? They say you can go to the house of God empty-handed. He expects me to give. I'm giving my tithe because I am expected to do so. Or you are actually doing it out of the command of the one you are staying under. Ask your neighbor and say, who are you abiding with? Ask your neighbor again, who are you abiding with? That's why I said in this world that we live in, it's very easy for you to shift your focus from the main goal, which is Christ. And you, you put your focus on something else, especially as children of God. It's very easy for us to shift from Christ and we put our focus on blessings. And what the Bible says about blessings. And what the Bible says I should have. And what God says about his promises. And how these promises are supposed to come to life, to pass in my life. How I'm supposed to accept it. How I'm supposed to experience it. How I'm supposed to feel it. How I'm supposed to testify about it. Whereas your focus has shifted. Whereas your focus has what? Has shifted. It means you have jumped ship. Your residence is no longer Christ. It's now the blessings. It's very easy that when you come in the house of God, you accept Christ and say, Lord, I accept you. Because when the preacher was preaching, said to you, if you, are, you come to Christ, your problems will be solved. That disease will be healed. You will get a job. You will be prosperous. You come and accept Christ. But the main reason you are here for is not residence with Christ. It's what you had being promised at the altar. Some of us, we have been in church for a very long time. 
People come, people go, people, a person comes for two weeks or for two months, that person is blessed. I've been here for years and there's nothing, nothing that is happening in my life. Ask yourself this question, am I still abiding with Christ or am I now abiding in my own desires? There's nothing wrong with having desires. No, there's nothing wrong with believing what the Bible says about the promises of God concerning your life. There's nothing wrong with it. It's what you should do as a child of God to believe. When we have read the Bible says, if you abide in me, then whatever you ask the Father in my name, then he will be able to give to you because it brings glory to his name. Now the question is, am I still asking it in the residence or I have jumped ship? Ask your neighbor that question. Are you still asking it under the residence of Jesus or you have jumped ship? If you are still under the residence of Christ, then how come you are still asking for a job even today? I know we preach, we say delay is never denial. denial. It's true. But how come your own doesn't change? Your own has been the same for the past five years. You are still talking about the very same thing you spoke about the first day you came to Christ. Hear me right. The Bible says in Romans that everything that happens to us happens for what? Happens for what? For good. For them that are called by his name and he has loved. It's not a coincidence that you are in that situation. It's not a coincidence. It's not a mistake that you are where you are today. But my question is, are you experiencing that still under the residence of Christ or have you jumped ship? By jumping ship, I mean you have moved. Hallelujah. 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 To show that we have jumped ship, that's why when things or the situations that we are looking at that we have met them, our dwelling place, that we are facing day in and day out to show that we are now focused on them. That's why there's no change, number one. That's why we forget that God is our hiding place, two. That's why we forget that he alone is our refuge and our fortress, three. That's why we forget that it's him alone who can fight our battles for us and give us victory at the end of the day. That's why we forget that I don't have to go to the battleground, but I stay where they said I should stay and wait to attain the victory that is coming my way. To show that our residence, we are no longer abiding with Christ. Our residence is no longer Christ. We always want to find out a way out of our problems. You are always trying to figure out the next move. What do I do now? What do I tell people now? What do they think of me now? What am I going to say now? I mean, I have been in this condition for a long time. You know, I have been praying. I have been fasting. I have given my, I've been giving my tithe. I even lost my job. You know, that man is a, it's not a man of God. We end up speaking abominable things with our lips. That will bring consequences tomorrow. Because we have simply changed our residence. And we forget that at the end of the day, it's not about me, it's not about you, it's not about what I receive or what kind of a blessing that I get. It's about Christ, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. At the end of the day, it's about Christ, the hope of glory. The one who died for me on the cross of Calvary when I didn't deserve it. The one who paid the ultimate price for me, instead for me to die, he jumped in my place and said, I will die in your place. We forget it's about him. And we now focus on the things that he is promising. The allowances, let me keep calling it that way. The allowance, I'm reading. 
We now forget that we are children of God. We have to be his disciple and stay in him. Do his word. Yield out fruits. Fruits that people can see with naked eyes, not with prayer, with naked eyes that this person is indeed a child of God. How many of us today in this society that we live in, that people can stand and say, ah, that one, we mean that one. How many of us? How many of us that I cannot tell, but my neighbor can say, I have never seen God, I have never met him, but through the life of that one, I know there is a God somewhere. And I know this God is alive. How many of us? But rather we are worse than our neighbors who are, not, who are heathen, who are not even Christians. People who have never stepped their foot in church, we are worse than them. And the worst part is that as in as much as we are worse, rather than coming back, to the focus point, we justify our actions and we justify ourselves. We justify every single thing that we do and we forget the purpose why we were saved in the first place. I know people, you hear people saying, you get saved for the sake of your family. Well, that's true, it's not a lie, but it's not entirely the truth. Because you also get saved for yourself. Because you can get saved for your family. They come to church. They encounter God. The way you don't want to encounter God. And they make heaven. And when now you go to hell. Why? Because you have shifted from the focus, which is Christ. And staying and abiding in him. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ask your neighbor, who are you abiding with? In 1 John 2, verse 7, it says, He who does the will of God abides forever. He who does what? Come on, somebody. He who does what? The will of God abides forever. Abide with me. That's why today we have people who are always traveling from post to pillar. I don't know what you're looking for, but you know what you're looking for. Today you are here, tomorrow you are there, that one you are there. In, in a whole year, in 52 Sundays of the year, you are in 52 churches. The whole year. It doesn't matter which church you're attending, to tell the truth. It doesn't matter who your pastor is. It doesn't matter how he preaches. It doesn't matter the condition of your church. The point is, are you abiding in Christ? And is he abiding in you? Are you? When if Christ can come back right now and say, I'm here to take my church, are you one of those who will be taken to heaven? Having a fancy pastor who drives big cars, who lives large, like we call it these days, not rich, living large, doesn't guarantee that you are with Christ. And accepting Christ here at the altar when you lift up your hands doesn't guarantee either that you are abiding with him. I'm sorry, but it doesn't. Being an intercessor of a big church doesn't guarantee that you are abiding with Christ. You can be interceding for people to see how far you can pray and how deep of tongues you can speak in and how much the Holy Spirit can touch you and how much you can flow in the Holy Spirit. But it doesn't guarantee that you are abiding in Him. You can be a preacher who wears classy things. You are always on fashion. You are always trending. You have the most available whatever. I don't care. You are wearing the most, the most expensive whatever. But it does not guarantee that you are abiding with Christ. 
You can change your hairstyles. You can do makeup like I do. There are people who even do better. Who do makeup better? You, you can't even think. You'll think Kim Popi at the end of the day. But it doesn't guarantee that you are abiding with Christ. It doesn't. You can be a leader, an elder, whatever position you can have. But it does not guarantee that you are abiding in Christ. How do I see that I am not abiding in Christ? Let me help you today. You see, once you get to a point where you start figuring things out and you start thinking things out and how I'm supposed to do this and how I'm supposed to do that and who, who thinks about me this way and who's going to take me this way. Know that you have jumped ship. Your residence is no longer Christ. If you are still a Christian, to know that you have moved from abiding with him, it's very simple. Once you start praying, the temperature of the temple, Jehovah now comes and unti abe amyang. Hey, even the malihodu mu blessi chaka koloi, wa mu fale malika no mu file leva na mara na na sali gudu uchi wone mahau le mama otaki sadu mara na nchomo fachor kiswabi she malihod. You have simply changed residence. Ao sali mududi, o shifti. If you are a resident of Christ and you abide with him, you will understand the scripture that says that everything happens for good. And you will, you will understand and live the situation, the scripture that says, in everything, give thanks. You will understand that. In everything. It doesn't matter what it is, but in everything, give thanks. Even when you are lying on your sick bed, I still say, Father, I thank you because I opened my eyes this morning. Even when there is no food, Father, I thank you because I am still alive. Even if there's nothing to show, Father, I thank you because you are still God in my life. You have never changed. Father, I thank you because your word said you are the same yesterday, today and forever. You will not change because of my condition. You will not change because of what people are saying about me. You will not change because they are rejecting me. You will not change because my condition is not changing. But because you are God, I thank you. Because you are God. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to prove the point. Because you are God. You alone are God. I thank you. Then you know you are still a resident of heaven. Hallelujah. Then you know you are still a resident of heaven. You are on the right track. Your focus is still Christ. Hallelujah. Open Psalms 91. Today I'm going to read scriptures that we all know. We've heard a lot of times. We call them ourselves when we want to defend ourselves in self-defense. How many of us know that we Christians, we know how to defend ourselves? Hmm? How many of us know that we are good defenders of ourselves? And we forget that the Bible says God is the defender of the defenseless. He is the father of the fatherless. He is a husband to a widow. We forget that. And we focus on how we want to defend ourselves and how we want society to respond to our situation. Are we in Psalms 91? Can you read it louder in your Bible? Please read it louder in your Bible. Let me read for you. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress. My God in him, I trust. 
I will say of the Lord. I will say of the Lord. My God in him. I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers. And under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. How many of us can still quote that scripture with honesty and the purity of heart? How many of us? That he alone is my fortress. He alone I trust. It's only under his wings we are safe. It's only when I abide with him that my life is safe. I have a keeper who watches over my soul, over my life. What goes about me? How many of us can say that in sincerity of heart? That my God in him only, I trust. Or you trust in your own certificate. You trust in your own degree and your own diploma. And your knowledge and how you can do things. And nobody can say anything about it. How I how many of us can say, God, I trust you in my situation? Wholeheartedly. Not saying I trust in you because I know I still have a thousand rands, a couple of thousand rands in my bank account. So they can still push me for the next coming three, four, five months. You can honestly say, God, I trust in you. You are my refuge. You alone are my fortress. In you alone, I am safe. When I stay in you, when I stay with you, when I abide in you, I am safe. We have become those type of Christians, you know, when, when we want something to happen. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong if you believe in it that when you want something, you speak it in the atmosphere. That's what other people say. There's nothing wrong with that. I just don't believe in it. Because my Bible says I get in my closet and, my sh and I shut my door and I pray to the Father who is in heaven and when he sees me, he will answer me and reward me. Now, I'm, I'm not saying if you believe into speaking things into, into the atmosphere. Yes, the Bible says we must speak things into existence. But my question is, when you are speaking, are you speaking to Konyorora someone? Okay, I said it in vendor. When you are speaking, are you speaking it to Suina someone? To Swabisha someone? Or you are speaking for them to hear how good and big your God is? And you speak it, you call things, the Bible says we should call things that are not as if they are and bring them into what existence. Are you calling those things that are not believing in your heart to God? I have nothing to do with it at the end of the day. In as much as I'm calling out this thing and I'm praying, I say, God, I'm believing you for this thing. I have nothing to do with it. Or you are actually calling out that promotion because you know that I have a certificate of what they are asking for in the next post. There is this thing that someone once said to me. Don't get me wrong. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. How many of people are not married in here? Don't be shy. There's nothing wrong with you if you're not married. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with you not being married. 
But my question is, when you come to me, who's married, who's wearing my ring, and you say to me, ah, walala resna, resa nyalwa, watzewa ona lekata hava, nari pila free. I'm not in a cage in my husband's house. Let's set the record straight. I'm not in a cage. I'm not in prison in Andres' house. I'm not. He's not around. I still go everywhere I want. Even when he's around, I still go everywhere I want. And he doesn't question me and interrogate me. Rather, my husband is the one who will tell me, you have not gone to the mall for the past month. Get out now. Go. 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 When you are married, you are not in prison. Uh -uh. It's just a privilege that God extended his hand to us. It's not that we are special. It's not that there's something extraordinary. No. It's just God gave us the favor. Arizama. Arifabalikani. Now, even if Mudimu Uzamile, are you still under him? Jongoba Uzamile, so. Or now we are using our blessings, the things that we people who are married, we do. Kura hau nye chuwe periri, umono karu jole wenape, utsenili odimu. You are now a candidate of heaven, J. Automatically. It doesn't work that way. You can wear your five million dollar ring. You can wear your stone. You can, as long as you are not abiding with Christ, forget it. It's that simple. But that about now, we're not about to run a complicated deal. Radijigiisha, or the suit of the lavari na, and getting out of the way of God and how we do sin and we vindicate ourselves. Radiadi, until at the point of death. That's why you say, "Jo, never, never, you go to church like that money alone." But you knew all these years that what you're doing is wrong. Did he come and abduct you? Did he steal you? Eh? Or oh, you packed your bags yourself? How many of us? And the worst part of it, leva karama ochala. Eh, na pe kinye yonto elengle na jo. Eh, na pe na pe na pe. And you forget you are not married to prove a point to your parents. You don't need to prove a point to your parents. Your parents have been married long before you came, and there's nothing new that you are going to do that they haven't done. Nothing. But you are in that state. God allowed you to be in that state so that his glory can be made manifest in you. We pray, some of us, day in and day out. I want my people, I want my parents to be saved. How will your parents be saved with the type of answers you are giving them? South Africa, can I lead the rights? One day my mother said to me, Kita obe, tali the rights, iche uwe cha u. Kamu waka u na the rights. The rights uko strate. Usin kamu waka kamu. Na pila wa yamela u tsarisha bo mmao. Then where is the God you are talking about? Because the Bible says, respect your mother and father so that your days may be long on earth. Which one are you abiding with? Because if you are abiding with Christ, he will tell you, no, don't go here. Sit here. Sit here. And you sit. Stand up. Take three steps. You stand up and you take three steps. Sit here. You sit. That's abiding. Malodita. But once you start doing this, about once you start doing this, you are God, you are challenges. 
I am a Christian. Ne? Or let me have one person. Let me have one person. Stand there. You are challenges. It's like a woman. Malihodi ki mudim wager. Tiawo kim zalwan. Wager. Emma kamera wam malihodi. Wager. Tora malihodi mu. Wager. You are a Christian. This one is a Christian. This one is God. Those ones are challenges. Do like you are fighting, like you are blocking the way like this. Thank you. You are God, ne? You are telling this one, let's go, follow Malibut. You go. You stand. Stop here. This one, because you are staying under this one, it's this one's job to fight with this one. Am I right? It's not your job. Am I right? Come. You come. Stand here. You stand. You are still under the residence. Whatever you are doing, you are being instructed, you are following instructions. But once you start doing this, start fighting. Come. I get this one is fighting. You leave this one here. You start going this way. And you go this way. And you go this way. You are no longer under the residence. You have jumped ship. Now, this is what tricks us as Christians. Can I have one last person? Come, Michelle. Stand here. This one is what you want, the promise of God in your life. Ne? Your job, your car, your marriage, your what, what, your what, what, your what, 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 your house, your what, what. It's here. This is your promise. Ne? This is still the enemy, the devil. That one is God. You're a typical Christian. Come back. Come. Stand behind Malavodi. Malavodi, God is still leading you to what? To what? To your promise. Right? The devil is still in front of you. He's still fighting. This one is still leading you. If you follow my commandments, you are truly my disciples. And if you abide in me and me in you, you are truly my disciple. Come. Come stand here. You stand there. Stand here. This is God fighting this one. Ne? Come. Come stand here. God still leading you. But once you start doing this, come. Shapa you ten. Level up. Come. Come stand here. Jigao yoko. Ten. You go there. You stand there. You stand there. Go. Go. Go and take your blessing. Go and take your blessing. Are you still abiding in Christ? Are you still abiding in Christ? But you do have what? Now the trick is this. That we don't realize as Banabamudim. When I have now led myself to come and attain the blessing. Blessing ye. You do that two months. I got Kele nyalo la two months. Ka khodi ya boraro a thoma go beta. A sa bo ya hai. A sa o fa chelete. E bila o ya kerekeng o betena. A ke nya ko bilolo mo kwa morutinya no we wa. It means you have attained the blessing in the wrong way. Listen to me. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes you rich and adds no sorrow with it. No so, not even a little, no sorrow with it. But then if you are having a blessing that is giving you sorrow, ask yourself, how did you get it? It means you used your ability to do what? To get it. God is still standing where you left him. Where he said, sit here. I'm still, sit here. I will take you forward. No. Mamma muti le morao a wawara or mamma. Okay. They say I'm called. Okay. Pastor Maluhodi is doing intercession. All right. It means in the next time maybe get a kill ashara murut. Okay. Our wawa fit. Our ashara murut. This is what you start doing. You get out of charis. You start searching to be an asha somewhere in another church. 
Jafita Jawra, no go along on. Now you come back. I get it, do it, Tile. Satanu Papa Tilager. Now you come back. Emma, in front of my lord. Ah, Marawana Mujima Waluka. You are not good. Yeah, see, I'm a sakaha like a rappel. Yeah, hale ke fast, hale ke niel. Ke hale muruta ija taithi yaka. Awa, ke hale ngingi. Mile le makoi kwa yaka fedile. Eh, satana ka masajwa. Did God take you to where you were? Did he? So now why are you blaming him? Thank you, you can go sit down. Why not allow God to be God in your life? God doesn't need your help. God doesn't need our help. He doesn't need our intellectual. He doesn't need how we think and how, we are, how well we are experienced. He just needs you to acknowledge that you are God above everything. You are God. And you can do it on your own. Without my help, you can do it on your own. After all, he created heaven and earth without your help. He also created you without your help. So why would he need your help now that you are grown? The same God who knows the number of hair you have upon your head. You don't even know how many strands of hair you have upon your head. But he knows. Why would he need your help now that you are this age? It's simply because we have left our abiding place. We are now after the blessings. We are now after the promises. We are now after what we heard the preacher saying. We have totally forgot that it's about Christ and me coming back and reconciling with Christ and going to heaven one day. We have forgotten that. We come to church because I have something or a position that I'm doing at church. We come to church because if I don't go, Mamuruti will ask me, where was I? What was I doing? We go to church so that people can see how well I am advancing in what I'm doing. We go to church for people to see that I'm doing well. I'm not poor. I am managing on my own. We go to church to hear what the pastor is going to say. We go to church to see how Mamruti is wearing and how home home is doing what and how home home is doing what. We no longer go into the house of God because we want to abide with Christ and let him be the Lord and Savior of our souls. I don't know if you are hearing me. We go to church to catch up with Mas Mama, Linda Tessa Mama, Lepra Tessa Mama. We go to church to now discuss where do we go for the weekend? How were you praying? What were you praying about? And what did God say to you? Let me give you a simple example that I have seen in this church. Right here in Cheris. Let me just give you an example. Please don't mistake in what I'm saying. Don't say I'm speaking for my father. Let me, when I say my father, I mean Apostle Makananis. Let me just give you a typical example. How many of us, Daddy has stood in this altar and warned us against doing something and we still went ahead and do it? How many of us? Kibaba kaibari naba dedu ukila wala lere na gana mo. Aru uska dia 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Dia 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Hari chwa mo yana yele bari le muska idia. Waya wadia yona exactly. How many of us? Some of us dedu will come. Please don't go home. Your job is next week. Don't go home. God is about to bless you. Stay here. Don't go home. How to move away? Beka di paka di beka chao kam shufru. Fur anyone has to. How many of us? How many of us? Daddy has told us this relationship won't work, but we still went ahead and got married. How many of us? How many of us? Daddy still told you. Do not do this thing. It's not like a Christian. God will bless you. You still went ahead. 
and did what is not right and you slept with a manager to get a position. How many of us? It's now that things have become worse. That's when we now start to remember, by the way, I'm a child of God. God, where are you? Where did I leave you? Oh, I have found you. Uh -huh, God, now my HR is, wants to, to send me away. They gave me a letter of retrenchment. Daddy, please pray for me. I don't want to lose my job. Daddy, please pray for me. My husband has left me or my wife has left me. I want them back. I want to hear the mind of God. Is this my husband? Is this my wife? How many of us? How many of us? Daddy, please, I want a job. It's been 10 years. Yes, you said I shouldn't go home. I went home because they were calling me. They said they wanted to see me. They want to see you. My mother will ask you, are you dancing when they want to see you? Are you dancing when they want to see you? How many of us? You don't listen. How many of us? When you abide in me, you follow my commands. We are not following commands, but we want God to abide with us. We want God to abide with us. Our daddy nabrado like a monyaki, our avere kubi file, naki avere gao nyaka di chele techak. It's when you are 45. When daddy says to those who want to get married, when you Is that not what you are doing? Is that not what you are doing? I'm not saying don't 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 get me wrong. I'm not saying if you are not married, it's wrong. Uh -uh. There is the purpose of God, but in as much as there is the purpose of God, are you living within that purpose of God? Or you are doing your own things. Our de di de do len na kibiri cho oni nkiduji charis. Our bajo bi chabo muruti ma omane libo prophet korombi na oni nkiduji. Our petri kita meki chabo nkio rappel chiki chiki ae ma apostole bi la sa kuamujimu. That man doesn't hear anything. God does not even speak. He can't even prophesy. That man is not even a man of God. I am going. You start your own church. Demons attack you. When you are about to die, that's when you, are, you remember, eh, hey, there is old man in Charis. Hey, let me go back to Apostle Our Daddy. You know, I want to confess my sins. I think about for it. When you came to Charis, you came alone. And when you left, you left of your own accord. Whose instructions are you following? And whatever instructions you are following, is he Christ? Is he? Huh? Is he Christ? We are, we are faced with situations that even us ourselves, we can't speak of God in sincerity and in honesty because we are not abiding in him. We know the Bible, yes, from Genesis to Revelations, yes, but we are not abiding in him. Because if we were abiding in him, the same Bible that we know, the scriptures would have effect on us. But it's not because we have jumped ship. We are not abiding in him. We are not abiding in him. We are abiding in our own desires and in our own ways and in our own perspectives and in our own conceptions and, and what people think and what people would say. That's where we are. Not where God wants us to be. If we abide with God, we will understand that he said in his word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will always be with you until the end of age. 
If we abide with him, we will understand it. It's under the shadow of the almighty God. That's where we are safe. We will understand that by his stripes I am healed. Even if he doesn't heal me, but I am safe with the almighty where I am. Even if he doesn't give me a job, I am safe with the almighty where I am. Even if I don't have blessings, I am still safe with God where I am. As long as I had God, David said, if it had not been for the Lord who has been on my side, the enemy that I'm trying to run against would have swallowed me. If it had not been for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go back into abiding with God. Stop coming to church because you want blessings. Stop coming to church because you want to prove a point. Stop coming to church because you want to elevate yourself. Come to church because you understand that without Christ there is nothing that I can do because I was created for him, with him, through him, for me to be where I am today. Understand that I go to church because it's only in him where I live, I move, and I can have my being. Meaning without him, I am non-existent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stop allowing situations to come between you and your God. You and your dwelling place. Paul says in Romans that what shall we say to his thing if he, God, who gave us his only begotten son to us, to us, how can he not give us all things through him? Don't allow things of this flesh to separate you with your maker. Don't allow things of this life to separate you with your abode, your dwelling place, your resting place. Don't accept it. Allow nothing to come between you and God. Allow the scripture that says nothing shall separate me from the love of God to be fulfilled in your life. Don't allow situation to separate you from his love. Don't allow condition to separate you from him, from staying with him. Don't forget life in abundance comes from him alone and nowhere else. He alone is our source and he alone will forever be the source. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today we are Christians that we desire so many things. We are blindfolded by what we want. And the positions we are pursuing in church. I don't pray because I want God in my life. I pray because I want pastor to see me. I tithe because I, I want pastor to recognize me. I'm always on time because I want pastor to recognize me. I'm doing this because I want a pastor to recognize me. Is God recognizing you? Is God recognizing you? David said in Psalms 24 that one thing that I, I, David, desire of the Lord and that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life just to behold, just to behold his beauty. Just to see how marvelous he is. How kind and merciful he is. That's the only thing I desire. To be in the house of the Lord. Just to behold him. Just to say thank you. Just to say you are good. All the time in my life. There is a song that we love singing that says in Gisiz and Kosiam, Ginga Sugi Enda Weni Yami Yogulinda. Nala po imimoya ifungu zangamantra. We sing that song, but yet we are walking out of Inta Weyami Yoglinda. 
Don't be like the five virgins who came to wait for the groom without preparing themselves. Be like the wise ones who came fully prepared knowing that the groom is coming and when he comes, I want him to find me waiting for him here. I don't want to miss him. Not that I don't want to miss where he's taking us, but I don't want to miss. I don't want to miss an encounter with the Lord. Don't find yourself preparing yourself in time that God is looking for you. Because you leave him, by the time he wants to bless you, you are nowhere to be found. And when he gives the blessing to the neighbor, that's when you start contemplating. But it was supposed to be mine. Where were you when he wanted to bless you on time? Remember the Bible says God is never late. He's always on time. Why would he be late for you? Rather sit in the presence of the Lord and tell myself like Job, come what may, they reject me, they ridicule me, they insult me, they say I'm useless, I am pointless, there's no way I'm going. I know for a reason that my Redeemer liveth and one day I will behold him with mine eyes. Your Redeemer still lives. Where are you going? Where are you going? Your Redeemer still lives. Where are you going? We are Kai. Away from God. Where are you going? Away from Him. Where are you going? Him alone can sustain you. Him alone can sustain you. Him alone can keep you alive. Him alone can assure you. Listen, when you, when you are in the presence of the Lord, when you abide with Christ, you understand that I am secured. You understand I am content. You know I am happy. I'm satisfied. I'm assured where I am. I am a child of the most high God. I serve a living God who doesn't sleep nor slumber. I serve a God who's always on top. It doesn't matter what they are doing. It doesn't matter if they are prospering. But I serve a God who's always on time and who's always by my side. I serve a God who's always by my side. Where are you going? Ask your neighbor, where are you going? Where are you going? The Bible says when Joseph fought with his brother Esau, he ran away. God told him, flee for your life. He ran. And when he got to a certain point, God says, go back to your brother. It is well. He will not kill you. He's not after your life anymore. Joseph said, God, I will not go anyway. I will not go anyway until you change me and change my situation. The Bible says the angel of the Lord that night wrestled with him the whole night. He said, I will never let you go. Never. If it means staying here in the wilderness, I will stay. If it means sweeping the church, I will sweep. If it means cleaning the church, I will clean. If it means coming here, I will. If it means sleeping here, I will sleep. But I will never let you go. Let them get jobs. Let them get married. Let them get cars. Let them get houses. Let them get what they want. But I will never let you go until you bless me and change my name for the sake of my life because you are God who keeps me alive and sustain me. If I go back to his soul, he's going to kill me. Therefore, I won't encounter the promises that you have for me. But I will stay because you are God. I will stay because you are Chira. I will stay because you're my redeemer. I will stay because you're my savior. I will stay. Where are 
Where are you going? Away from him. Where are you going? Away from him. Where are you going? Because he is right here with you. By your side. He said a thousand shall fall on your side. Ten thousand on your right. But no harm. No harm will befall you. He said they may come in one way. But in seven ways they will despair from you. He says when the enemy comes in like a flood. To come and eliminate you. I will rise up your standard. So that the enemy will not find you. Because it's in Christ that your life is hidden. When they come to eat up your flesh at night, he said they will stumble and fall. For your sake. Where are you going? Ask your neighbor, where are you going? Because he's still right here. He's still right here with you. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? David said to him, you are God. You are everything. You are merciful. You are kind. My cup runneth over. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Where are you going without him? Where are you going? 